Hey everyone, it's Zelenka and welcome to my next video. A lot of people wanted this video for a long time. So welcome to my story time of how I got into software engineering. For those who are new to my channel, it's Zelenka, I'm 25. I have three degrees in computer science and I work as a senior software engineer. I hope that you can get some insights into my life. I hope I can motivate you to pursue your dreams and maybe inspire you. Grab a good drink, I do have the first pumpkin spice latte of autumn season here and let's get started. Let's take us into my secondary grammar school which was generally oriented on foreign languages and actually ecology. <laughs> um, so I didn't know what to do with my life. I was interested in geography, I liked physics, I liked chemistry but I honestly, I didn't know what to do with my life. I really liked volcanology, I really liked seismology, and I was watching people catch tornadoes. That was me as a kid. I already had no idea. And people in their last two years of secondary grammar school, they already studied for the exams to go to university. And I had no idea which university to choose. I knew that some people were going to study informatics. And I was thinking about it because I was really hit by the boom of smartphones. I had each and every flagship from Samsung and I was always like scrolling in the settings and I was looking at every little thing I could personalize or customize or where I could look at it and just find out what this setting does and how it works. And I really wanted to know how smartphones work. I had no idea how computers work and I was like, okay, one day I want to look at this device and know how it works. Because it was quite a miracle to be holding something like that in my hand back in the days. So I knew some people were going to study IT, but I was like, I don't like math and I have never had a course on informatics in my life. I mean, we had a course on informatics, but I wouldn't call it informatics because we were just doing some graphics and we were programming a tortoise. I don't remember how the program is called, but you can definitely write that in the comments because I don't remember. Anyway, we've never really had a real programming language. We were never really coding anything. We had no idea about algorithms, nothing. And then one day, as I was thinking more and more about studying informatics, we were able to take an excursion um, to Microsoft. This was an initiative for girls in IT. And we were, we were basically only girls which was really sad but we were basically taken to Microsoft and we listened to a bunch of talks about software engineering and how the career is great etc etc. I remember that at that time there was a partial sun eclipse and I thought like this is my sign this is my sign to go into tech no not really but I really liked the idea of being a software engineer but I knew that I didn't want to code and then it was time to apply for universities and I didn't have a backup plan. So I only applied to this one university, which was said to be, or to this one faculty, which was said to be the best in informatics in Slovakia. I really wanted to stay in Slovakia because I knew I'm going to study something I have no idea about. I'm an introvert. I don't like a bunch of new things at once. So I was like, okay, so I'm just gonna, you know, learn uh, how to code and the rest of my life is gonna stay the same. I was so wrong. So the thing about the faculty I was applying to was that you had to have a good matura, basically the last exam of your high school or of your secondary grammar school, and you had to score really good points in math. As I told you, I didn't like math and I was not really good at math. I mean, I was like, I was above average, but I just really didn't like math. And when stress is combined with something you hate, you don't really score good results. So my exam results were nothing really I could use to apply to that faculty. So then I took a private test in math to test my math and logic skills and use that to apply to my faculty. So basically I studied really hard to get into the faculty I wanted to 
And in the end, I got results which were kind of, let's say, satisfactory for me to apply. I applied together with my best friend and luckily we were accepted, so we started studying. We could have chosen a four-year study, but we chose three-year studies. Basically, the fourth year gives you like an introduction into coding and that was something what I was really missing. So anyway, I went to this three-year course thinking like, oh, they're gonna teach us everything because a few months back, we actually went into the faculty and had a look at what it looks like. We talked to a few of the teachers and they were like, we are gonna teach you everything. Whoa, daylight. We're in the first year and yeah, I thought that we're gonna get an introduction into coding and some people might call this an introduction because we had a course on C language. You know, we had to code Hello World and a bunch of other things. But the thing was that I had no idea what an ID is. I had no idea how to code like zero. I didn't know what that was. I mean, it was a program and a bunch of symbols. I would, I had no idea what they mean. So just imagine writing hello world with like no knowledge at all. Like what's a bracket? What's a semicolon? Like what each symbol is for? I had no idea. And now imagine coding in C. It's like a bunch of symbols you don't understand. So I was like, what am I doing here? Like, what should I do? And a lot of people actually came from schools where they had IT courses. They already knew some Python or something similar, or at least Pascal back in the days. So they had it much easier. I learned really, really slowly. Like I, I think that that part of me was not like really developed. Like I was good. I had good logic. I had good thinking, but I just wasn't good at coding. That was part of my brain, which actually had to develop. <laughs> And that changes your life because once you start thinking as a coder, life will never be the same again. So what happened was that we came to pointers and pointer arithmetic at that time was really difficult for me. And we were like really quick to get to pointers. So there was no time to really like adjust. And as a result, I failed the course. Then we had a course on Java, which was basically going from procedural programming to object-oriented programming. And again, that was just like really difficult to comprehend because that was in the second semester. I didn't have time to study for it. I didn't really have time to learn procedural programming and I had to go to object-oriented programming. And again, just no idea. I had no idea how that works. I was actually studying procedural programming during the I think two week break we had into winter sem after the winter semester. And then I came to object oriented programming and it was quite something different. You might say that it's easy to switch now for you because you already have some knowledge in coding, but I had like zero, nothing. Of course, I also failed that course. I was really depressed. I was really sad. I was already looking at other schools I could apply to. I really wanted to go into art school and I really wanted to paint. And a little part of me wanted to become an actress. So what ended up happening was that I had no summer break, honestly. Like after I failed those courses, I was like, I really have to learn how to code. So I read the original C programming book and I also read a book on Java. And I was coding throughout the summer break and I was just coding the little examples from the books. And then the third semester was the worst thing ever. That was the time when we had the data structures and algorithms course. And that was so hardcore for me. We had little assignments which we could do to earn like small points. And then we had three huge assignments. The first project was basically about how to do malloc. So how to allocate memory. Just imagine like writing a program about allocating memory when you've just done like small coding and examples on how to actually be able to code something. And now you're coding malloc. And it wasn't the only course. We also had course on operating systems. So we had to know a lot about operating systems and we also had some scripting there. That was also one of the more difficult courses we had. And then we also had a course on networking where again, there was a big project. There were two big projects. And that was actually about coding your 
your custom TCP protocol. And again, like just imagine me coding a TCP protocol. When I look back, I'm like, oh, easy, but yeah, I know how much I struggled and how bad it was. One thing I forgot to mention, the C course which I failed the first semester, I had to retake that one in the second semester together with Java for the first time. And I actually passed the C course, but I failed the Java course. And we're in the third semester, so there's nothing I had to retake at this point, but I really just wanted to focus on everything. And I really had a good friend who was really like a mentor to me and he tried to explain everything to me and just he was he was different because he tried to explain those things from like a practical point he explained it in a way no teacher had explained it to us and it just made so much sense suddenly the same with pointer arithmetic like he he really pushed me to think about those concepts and really understand why they are done in a certain matter. So what ended up happening was that I actually passed all those courses. It was a horrible semester. I'm telling you, I I barely lived. I barely had any free time. So the only thing I was doing was assignments, assignments, assignments. And that was basically it, just studying. And then the fourth semester was around the corner. And that was the time when I had to retake my Java course. And guys, my Java project, my object-oriented project was like the best thing I ever done in Java. I don't really remember what the theme of the whole project was but we always got an assignment and we could just kind of like swim in the assignment so just find what we want to do so I ended up doing something for like teachers where they could create different tests where the tests would be graded automatically where where you would have timers for the students logins for the students logins for the teachers basically like an academic information system and the students were also able to write code in that system and it would compile the code and also like let them know what's wrong with it so just like an id the teacher was of course blown away by my beautiful project and i passed that course the rest of my bachelor studies were let's say pretty much easy I'd say because in the last year I already caught up everything I had to know and I was on the same level with my peers so finally I was able to relax a little bit and that was a time where we had to do our bachelor thesis and my bachelor thesis was a birth and that's a story on its own. But the result of my bachelor thesis was actually that I had a bunch of notes spread across the network and each of the notes had a certain task. It would, they were actually running a unit kernel, so they only had the code they needed to have to be able to run my task. And I actually sent them an image and they filtered that image and applied basically a filter on top of it and then the main node combined all those pieces of the image into one image and it was basically inspired by MPI and used parallel processing and parallel processing structures. And happy me after defending my bachelor thesis. I really pushed hard. I got an A for my bachelor thesis and I was nominated for the Dean's Award. So I was extremely happy. I got my bachelor's degree and that was probably the best day of my life, honestly. Like I worked so hard and I finally got that title. I see that this video is getting pretty long. So if you're interested in having a part two where I sum up my master and my doctoral studies, then definitely let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. I hope that I could inspire you, motivate you, help you out in your life. And yeah, basically just tell you that if you struggle, it's okay, we all struggle. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!